Hi, I'm Scott Anderson, and I'm the producer of the LEGO project, Adventures on LEGO Island. We'd like to show you around. We've got some programmers here and some artists here, and like to show you what they're doing. Let's start out with Alex Goldobin, who's doing the path management right now for the race game. Hi, I'm Alex Goldobin. I'm going to talk you, uh, with you about race game and path management. Uh, here is the race game. We are starting on the top of uh, island, and then we enter that tunnel. And all idea of path management to be inside of the path. We cannot go out of the path. We have to follow a uh, road, and you, we cannot turn to the left or to the right. And we just have to stay inside the road. This is our car is moving. And a lot of funny things are going on here. Like here somewhere, oh, you can see a guy running. You should be familiar, this is your skeleton guy. And, oh, you can hear noise. I'm scratching walls of tunnel. Because I'm not a very good driver. Here is a shuttle. He's flying inside of our tunnel. And this is huge loop. We have to pass that. You can see that game. It's pretty difficult to drive. <laughs> oh. Thanks, Alex. I'm Jim Brown. I'm going to take you on a little cruise around Lego Island. Um, we use this... Uh, right now, we're under... Uh, running along freely, not under any path management control, as Alex was showing you. And we use this mostly as a tool right now to, uh, to let us evaluate art and see how things are moving along. And I can demonstrate a, a level of detail selection algorithm that we have in place here. There's a, a background view of the island. As we move closer, you can notice that details will increase. You can look at the top of this flat hill here. We have some plants. And as we move closer, the, you'll be able to gradually discern several different trees, different types of trees. And the detail improves as we get closer and closer. Um, and we can see all the, the nice specular highlighting that uh, Direct3D will do for us. And we can move right up to these trees and see any kind of detail we want. The, the advantage to showing lower levels of detail on things in the distance is that our performance is improved dramatically without affecting the overall visual quality. Um, we can move around and look at the whole island uh, Boy, I think out here we actually have an animation running of a, uh, somebody being rescued on a boat. We can sit here and watch that for a moment, sort of entertaining. We can, an advantage to running things here, animations in this mode is we can cruise around and look at it from any angle we want to. Uh, which the animators can't do in 3D Studio. It takes a good deal of effort for them to render the animation from another viewpoint. You can look at it from the other side, close up, and watch all the action and improve things. Uh, ah. we, can, we can decide if we want to have uh, nice camera views trying to follow the action around. I'm not very good at that right now. Notice here, I'm able to go straight through all of the uh, geometry. Later on, we'll be adding, when the user is, is actually moving around on these roads, we will be using path management control that Alex was showing you. But right now, it's only my extreme skill here that keeps me on the road. Um, I guess that's about it for now. Um, Randy Cho is going to show us uh, some more of LEGO Island under hardware acceleration. Uh, thank you, Jim. My name is Randy Cho, and I'm a 3D programmer on the LEGO project. And I'm going to show you exactly what Jim just showed you, except on a 3D accelerator board. This is a rendition board that retails for $159 right now, and it's on the market right now. And one of the nice things that this board offers is it's much smoother shading. The guru shading is much better than ramp mode in software. And of course, this board is much, much faster. 
it's about two or three times faster than, than on a P150, and this right now is running on a P90, Pentium 90 megahertz. Um, the rendition board replaces a regular VGA board completely. So this is a great deal for 159. Um, so Padijad is now going to show you the phonemes, lip syncing utility. Thanks, Randy. Hi, I am Parijad Chitle, and I'm going to show you this lip sync utility we developed. Let's see paper talking. Hi, Lego Connie and Lego Bo and Lego Chuck and Lego Lawrence and Lego everybody else. I just wanted to say hi and show you how I talk. Cool, huh? So this was the audio file of paper talking, and then we have a script of what paper said, and we take these two things and generate a phoneme stream and then we can make paper talk. Hi Lego Connie and Lego Bo and Lego Chuck and Lego Lawrence and Lego everybody else. I just wanted to say hi and show you how I talk. Cool, huh? And now we can go and see how he talks a 3D character in the game. Hi Lego Connie and Lego Bo and Lego Chuck and Lego Lawrence and Lego everybody else. I just wanted to say hi and show you how I talk. Cool, huh? And now Dennis, our program lead, will show you the jet ski race. Hi, I'm Dennis Goudreau. Thank you, Parajat. Um, what we're looking at here is the jet ski race that's part of the Adventures on Lego Island. Um, this is one more of the deliverables, deliverables that we've just handed off to Lego. Um, I just want to take you on a quick ride around the island, let you see what's going on with this race. This is one of the harder turns in the race. Oh God, and oh, I made it. Let's see, here's the uh, straightaway out in the back here and we got to avoid that shark that comes jumping by and make it through this little pass where the rocks are and watch out for that guy. And, oh, and here's one of our competitors. Now this guy's not too fast. I should be able to catch up with him if I can drive right. Now she's good. She's hard to, I gotta avoid these rocks. Oh, I hit him, oh, I hit him again. And here's another Bermuda Triangle, I gotta go around that. Notice how the camera tilts as I change directions. I'm never gonna win, not this time around. He's going too fast. Oh, look out for that ramp. Oh, I made it. One of the other things that we added to this game just recently is 3D sound. That little shark up there I can go around him on this side and hear him splashing. Now, you're probably listening in mono, so you can't hear any of this. But trust me, he's spl splashing on one side of me. And then I'm on this side, now he's splashing on the other side. Now, let me go get that guy, and I'll show you what, what we do when we crash into one of the competitors. This is one of the things the kids just love to do. Oh, we flipped him out of the way. Oh, I can't make that turn. He beat me. He beat me. I'm smashing into the rocks here. I've got him now. Oh. I made it. Oh, hit that guy. No. Oh, watch out for that guy. Oh. <laughs> anyway, that's our jet ski race. One of the uh, concerns that we've had all along is the quality of the images that we're presenting that represent Lego. And we spent a lot of time looking for ways of using Direct3D to get the maximum performance and still deliver the best quality images. Um, one of the experiments that we've done recently is uh, to use Direct3D to show, uh, to give us transparency. And uh, we demonstrated this to the LEGO team that was out here last week. And uh, we decided pretty much that we weren't going to use it all over the place because we didn't really like the quality of it very much. Um, but that we would use it in a few places where transparency seemed to be required. In this case, this is the helicopter windshield. Um, it looks pretty good from far away, but actually up close, you can see a dotted pattern. Um, that's the way that um, you do transparency when you're trying to render very quickly. And so um, I think the conclusion was that we would not be using it in this particular case. Um, in, the situ in this situation, we'll be using a slightly different color blue to represent the glass. 
So thank you, Dennis, for showing us uh, the racetrack. Um, now we're going to show you, this is the programming area, and I'd like to take you next to show you the artist area. So here we are in the Lego art room, where we put together a full-scale model of Lego Island. This has really helped us to see a little bit more about what we're doing on the game. Um, we use it for focus testing for the kids. We use it for photographs and, of course, for fun and therapy for the art crew. Um, this has given us a lot of ideas about what to do on Lego Island and helps contribute to the magic here on Lego Island. Hi, come on in. This is our graphics room here. I'm talking with Jeff Walkup. He's working on the phoneme generator right now. How's that one coming? Uh, it's coming great. Can we hear it? Peters, if we don't get some help delivering, we're going to have 150 unhappy customers. Great. So that's Jeff Walkup. He's working on the phoneme generator. We'll go over here, and we've got uh, the story of Laura Brick that's being put together. You can see from the uh, storyboards we've got here what the artists are working with. Here's Dave Patch, our lead artist, talking with uh, Kevin Byall. And uh, they're sitting here doing a rendering on 3D Studio. How's that coming, you guys? getting there. We're just starting. Uh, we're just starting to do this. Oh, some of the cool uh, Art Deco type feel. This is going to be a film noir type uh, video, isn't it? With Laura coming through the uh, 1930s uh, island that we've got set up here. Some great angles on this one. This is going to be ending up in a video in the biography, so we we'll, can't wait to see what that's going to look like. And then we'll move on over here to Justin Brown Station. Justin, how are you doing over there? And you're working on a vehicle, I see. Right, I'm separating all the colors out on the model so the defenders are the Great, great. Can we do a rendering of this one real quick? Sure, and then maybe I'm having a new type of... So this is 3D Studio. You're not using 3D Max now, are you? No, not right now. Do you wish you were? Yeah. Looks like we need a few more lights on this one. That's great. Then we'll move over here. There seems to be a crowd of people over here working uh, uh, very intently. I can see they've all got a Lego in their hands. So um, that's, that's a good start. Room. This is what they do all day long, and they actually get paid to do that. Um, over here, we'll come through and we'll see Dave Cherry over here, who's consulting with uh, Jim Pearson and Jan Sleeper. Jan, how's it going over here? Oh, show them the character bios. Oh, this is, uh, this is Nick Brick's uh, storyboard that uh, Jim Pearson has illustrated and uh, takes you through a little, this is again, this will be a little film noir like Laura Brick also. And uh, go ahead and flip through the next charts there. You see it goes from here to here. To here. So. And then we follow the story through. We can see the uh, action that we want to lay out and we can also see a, a good deal of the way that the, yeah. the background is going to look. It's going to be very dark. Dave right now is building the, uh, the office of Nick Brick. Great. Desks. This is the alleyway. I can't wait to see this one. Yeah. It's going to this, be is again, will be in the biographies that we put in the information center. It's going to be fun. He's doing a great job on desk. Nick's, uh, on Nick's desk. Nick's desk, Nick's, Nick's office. Oh, great. Can we, yes. Dave, are you at a point where we could see a rendering of that? Uh, this is the desk that Nick is standing in front of. Actually, that's not Nick, but you've got to stand in there, using the Infomaniac to stand in for, for him. And uh, that's going to be great. I can't wait to see this whole movie come together. That's a little tour of the Lego art room. I hope you've appreciated it. Uh, you can see there's an awful lot of enthusiasm and a little bit of playing around going on here. So it's about time that I got these guys back to work. See you later. Thank you.